we're going to be talking about the procedure for continuous cycling peritoneal dialysis today, otherwise known as CCPD. In today's discussion, we're going to be going over how to set up the cycler and the supplies you'll need, how to take down the cycler, what if, what if the order changes, what if I need to enter the orders, any complications, and then lastly, we'll discuss how do we document this in EPIC. So the supplies that you're going to need to do your cycler setup is going to be your cycler drain bag. They come two to a package. You'll need your cycler to set. And there are two types. One is a three-prong. Then you have a four-prong cycler cassette. Then you're going to need your cycler bag. Your masks. your bleach wipes. At the end, when you disconnect, you'll need a mini cap. And later on in the process, we'll discuss your effluent sample bag that you may, that you may need. You have a 12 foot extension that could give you a longer line from your drain option to the toilet or you have another 12 foot extension from the patient to the cycler. So those are all the supplies that you'll probably that you'll need in addition to the cycler machine. Okay. So this is your home choice cycler. It has three buttons, go, which basically means go forward. I want to go on to the next step. Stop, which is stop. I want to explore something further. I want to see something further into the menu. And we'll talk about that here in a minute or stop, I want to pause the therapy, I want to wait for just a second for some reason, and enter, which is your yes button. Yes, this is what I want. Yes, I want to make a change. Yes, I want to enter into this menu selection. And the up and down button will scroll you through whatever you see on the screen. The great thing about this machine is it will walk you through every step and it will also tell you when it alarms what's wrong and will help guide you how to fix it. The other key feature on this machine is the 1-800-BAXTER number that you'll also see on the back of the wall. So if at any point you get stuck or something um, isn't working right for you, you can always call that 1-800-BAXTER number and there will be a person on the end of the phone who has a cycler and they'll be able to walk you through whatever issue needs to be resolved. So you have your machine. In the back, you have your power cord. It gets plugged into a three-prong outlet and your on-off switch right next to the power cord, which is a toggle switch. So you'll turn it on. In a moment, you'll hear a beep. There'll be a little green cursor that comes on and it'll say, please wait while it does some internal checking. And the next thing will be press go to start. Before you set your machine up, 
you've already gathered your supplies, and that's what we're, we're going to do next. Now I'm going to talk about um, putting the patient's prescription into the machine. So the physician or the NP will write therapy volume, therapy time, fill volume, and then they'll tell you same dextrose, different dextrose. Well, how do I take it from Epic to the Cycler? So you're going to hit the down button, change program. Hit the enter button because you want to enter that menu. It'll say CCPD, IPD. You hit the down button. Your total volume is your therapy volume. So the total amount in whatever time frame, that's what you're going to put in. A typical prescription is somewhere between 12 and 15 liters. So we'll just say it's 15 liters. So you're going to hit enter and then you hit the up button until you see 150000. 15,000 milliliters is 15 liters. Okay, so 15000. That's our magic number. We're going to hit enter and make it stick. Enter is your yes button. Yes, that's what I want. So hit the down button again. Therapy time. Your therapy time could be anywhere from 8 hours to 10 hours to 12 hours. One of the nice things, features about this machine is that if you put in a therapy volume, but the therapy time doesn't really work, won't, live, won't leave you an adequate dwell time, it will alarm and tell you. Okay, so you hit the enter button and you hit the up button. We'll say it's 12 hours. So hit the up button. You can hold it or you can make it go just a little bit at a time. So 12 hours, it's still flashing. You hit your yes, that's what I want. Then hit the down button and your fill volume. That's the amount per exchange that you want the patient to have each exchange. The, the, just the specific fill. So typically it's going to be for an adult between two and three liters. We're going to say it's three liters. It should never be more than three liters. Hit the up button. And it'll say three zero zero zero. Hit the enter button. Yes, that's what I want. Last fill volume. That's the last amount that's going to go in that patient. Hit the up button, and we'll say it's three three thousand mLs or three liters. The enter button again and that makes it stick. Dextro same and then you have your units and kilograms and the patient's weight and you go back to go or stop. It'll tell you check the drain so when you hear it alarming you hit stop alarming if it doesn't like something you've programmed then it will flash and that means you can make a change. So you hit the up button. We want to know if the patient has more than 2100 mLs out. So we're telling the machine we're putting in three liters. We want to know if the patient has kept more than 900 because what goes in has to come out. And if we're trying to ultra filtrate and remove extra solution from this patient, extra fluid from this patient, we want to know that the patient, if the patient is not letting go of that extra fluid, right? So we're, we may want to increase this to 2,500. So when the initial drain occurs and the patient drains out 
say 24,999, 24,900, I'm sorry, 2,499 cc's, then the machine will alarm. And it'll tell you, I only got 2,499 mLs out on this initial drain. We're missing one more mL. Sometimes it's just as simple as making the patient roll from side to side or sitting the patient up. Okay, it can put you into some problem solving modes. So we're going to hit enter, hit the down button, or hit go. Hit stop. We have four cycles. We have a dwell time of two hours and 13 minutes. And now we're press go to start. So in preparing your patient before you get ready to start your cycler, what you need to do is make sure that the patient's transfer set is out and on their lap. You can use either a towel or a blue pad. just to protect your patient's bed covers. And then lay the transfer set so that it's handy for when you get ready to connect your patient. Okay, so part of this is a sterile procedure. Most of this is a clean procedure. So you'll just be wearing your, your regular blue gloves, but you will need to put a sterile procedure on the door and shut the door, okay? Part of your supplies is gathering your mask. When you get to the sterile part, the patient will need to wear a mask. And we'll put that on right there. And then you'll need to wear a mask. For the purposes of this demonstration, just pretend I have a mask on, okay? We'll set that right there. So, you've turned your cycler on, it says press go to start. The first thing, the next thing you're going to do is your hand hygiene. And then you get gathered your bag. You want to make sure you have the right solution. Baxter has the color coded. You pick up in the first bag. It tears down. They come in five and six liter bags for use on the cycler, depending on how much your therapy volume is. And again, we'll talk about that later on in the um, procedure. But you have your five liter bag. Yellow is a 1.5%. Green is a 2.5% solution, dextrose. And red is a 4.25% dextrose. That's part of your prescription. So the doctors will order that on a daily or as needed basis. You've got your first bag on the heater. You want to make sure that it covers the silver dot that's on the heater. Okay. And then these cabinets are great to use with the cycler because then you can open up this drawer and in the top drawer you can place your other two bags. For this demonstration, we're going to use the three-prong bag. If you have four bags that you need to use based on your prescription, you can use the four-prong and still be able to lay one of the bags potentially on the heater like so. Or you could lay it in the drawer across the top as well. So you have options. Okay. So now that you've got your bags ready, you're going to get, this is your four prong cassette. We're going to put this one to the side. And we're going to use our three prong cassette. That's all we have to do is take it out of the wrapper.
and following the directions, we're going to press go because we want to start. And it's going to tell us to load the set. So we lift up the door, let it come down, and there's only one way to load the cassette, and it's the right way. It won't fit into the cycler in any other way. It just pops in. Like so. And then you lift the door back up. Close the latch. And make sure it's secure. Then you take your cassette holder. And the slot that's right there and then snaps into place like so. And you can take your tape off here. And once you're done loading the set, you finish that. You want to go forward to the next step. You're going to hit go. It'll tell you to please wait. The cycler will do some internal checks and then you can get ready for your next step. You're going to go from right to left and setting up the cycler. This is your drain option. And so you'll take this off. And they call it the drain option because you have a couple of options as to what to do with the end of this drain line. You've got a pretty good amount of cord, of drain line. So some patients take this and connect it directly to the toilet so it drains directly into the toilet. You have a drain line extension. A drain line extension that you can connect to the drain line if you need more line that goes and drains the effluent directly into the toilet but most of the time the physicians and the people here prefer you to use your drain bag they come two to a bag And there's usually a little slit somewhere. So you pull out your drain bag, and you'll only need one, so you can put one to the side for the next day. You have a spike, and then you have your outlet. You want to make sure you clamp your outlet because when you put this on the floor and it starts to fill up with fluid, it'll leak through if it's not clamped. Okay, so then you have your spike. You're going to take your drain option, remove your tape, clamp your sample line port, take your cap off, your spike, and make your connection. Just to double check. You have your outlet clamped, your spike is open and connected to your drain option, and then closer to the top here, you have your effluent sample line clamped. And I'll bring this back up later on in our procedure. We'll talk about this. 
So the next thing you're going to do, and at this point, you'll have your mask on, your patient's mask is on. You're going to take your heater bay. These are color coded for a purpose. So the first one is your heater blind, and it's color coded red. So you take your red line, you're going to pull your cap, pull your yellow cap, let it, let it drop, and then make your connection and screw the, the two pieces together. And then break your frangible. You're done with that one. You're going to take your white line to your fill bag, pull the cap off, keeping them in your fist with your thumbs and your fingers behind the sterile parts. Pull the protective cap off. You can drop those two pieces and screw the two together until you can't see any part of the white above the lip. And then break your frangible to where you can see daylight in between the two pieces of plastic inside. Okay. And then the last one is color-coded blue. This is color-coded blue in case your um, last bag fill is a different dextrose. When we talk about programming your machine, which we will here in a few minutes, then if the doctor writes a prescription that the last fill is going to be a different dextrose concentration than what you use for the whole therapy, the blue line becomes very important because it'll go to the last volume, the last, the different dextrose from the other two bags, okay? So again, you're gonna pull the cap off, pull the protective cap off, screw the two pieces together, and break your frangibles, okay? In the meantime, it's been saying connect bags, open the clamps. We just did that. We connected the bags. All of our clamps are open, and you know they're open because you can slide them. This last one at this tall one is the patient line. This is the part that you're going to be connecting to the patient's transfer set. You want to leave the cap on and leave the line unclamped because when we go forward to the next step, after we press go, it's going to prime all the air out of the system, and so it'll prime this long line. So we want to go forward to the next step. We're going to press go, and the priming process takes nine minutes. So in that nine minutes is a great opportunity to make sure that you have a recent set of vital signs, the patient's daily weight is entered into the CCPD or entered into EPIC. This is also a great time in the nine minutes that if you're going to do your exit site care, you could go ahead and perform your exit site care. So the machine just beeped. It'll make one fairly loud beep just one time and then the next thing you'll see is check patient line connect yourself so this would be a good time to go ahead and do your hand hygiene again if you didn't before make sure you have your mask on and again I'm going to leave mine off just for the demonstration purposes but Make sure you have your mask on. Make sure the patient's mask is on. 
You only need clean gloves for this. However, you're getting ready to expose sterile parts. So when you make your sterile connection, that's why you need your mask on. Okay? So your mask is on. It says check patient line. And that's just making sure that this line is open. You're going to pull this off. If you haven't done so already, you can take your tape off. Your patient's transfer set should be sitting out on their lap. The transfer twist clamp is closed. So you want to make sure you hold your patient's transfer set in your fist with your fingers over your thumb. You've got your patient connector in your fist with your thumb behind your patient the lip of your patient connector. You're going to use your finger to pull the cap off. Untwist the mini cap, drop it, and make your sterile connection and twist it until it's, until you can't twist it anymore. Okay? At this point, this is probably going to have some betadine residue on it. So you can get your bleach wipes and wipe that residue off. Then you take your and open your twist clamp. Holding it by the light blue part, you just twist open the white part. And you're finished with making your connection. You want to go forward to the next step. So you hit the go button. Verify initial drain. Just for demonstration purposes, we have 10 mLs, but that may be a larger number when you're actually doing your therapy. You're going to hit go. Please wait. And the machine always starts in drain. When you're talking about peritoneal dialysis, there's always three steps. Drain, fill, and dwell and you will always start in drain. So the machine is going to drain the old fluid out. It will fill and that's when you start your first cycle. With the fill, it'll dwell for a period of time and then it'll drain the next cycle and start the next cycle with fill. So with the machine with the cycler, what you can do is you can look into the prescription and in the physician's order it'll read a therapy volume. So that is the total number of liters that in this particular session is going to go in and out of a patient. So for example, a 15,000 milliliter or 15 liter therapy volume. And then the fill volume is the amount of fluid that will go in at one time. So that would be the amount of fluid that you need to use per exchange. And then the prescription will read how many hours. It could be 8 hours, it could be 10 hours. Some patients have a 24 hour therapy time. So you have your therapy volume, your fill volume, and your therapy time. It's saying check patient line. So we're going to hit go. So it's still in the initial drain. And the initial drain alarm that we had there, that you had the previous 10 mLs, what that means is that the machine is expecting, based on what the previous fill was, how much it thinks it should come out. So when you're documenting an epic, two things come into play. It's your initial drain and your total UF. So with your initial drain, that's the amount of effluent that is coming out of the patient 
at the very beginning of the therapy. And there's a place in Epic to document that. And then the total UF is the total amount of fluid that has come out of the patient during the cycling time minus the amount of fluid that it puts in. So for example, if you tell the machine that you're using a therapy volume of 15,000 and the machine drains out 16,000 during the therapy, your total UF will be 1,000. Okay. So some questions that might be popping up at this point is where we are in the initial drain. It goes into fill one of one. Okay. You can press the arrow down. It's going to tell you how much of your fill volume. The initial drain volume, we drained out 93 milliliters. Your total UF, we don't have that yet. And review program. So we're going to hit, if you hit the down button again, this is the t current time. And it'll tell you it'll finish at 4 p.m. So if you're wondering what time your patient's going to finish with their therapy, you can come in and just keep scrolling down the down button. And you'll get to where the patient will finish. If you hit the up button, that's the current time. We want to review the program. So we're going to hit our enter button. That's our yes button. Yes, I want to. Review the program. Our therapy is CCPD, IPD. Our total volume, for the purposes of this demonstration, I made it 200. But if your physician order says 15,000 or 15 liters, you would hit the enter button. It'll flash, saying if it's flashing, you can make a change. And then you hit the up button until you have one five with three zeros. That'll be 15 liters, right? So then you hit the down button again, therapy time. For the purposes of this demonstration, I went with 20 minutes. The physician will tell you in the orders what your therapy time will be. So you hit the enter button. It'll flash at you. And then you hit the up button until it says, 12 hours, so 12 dot dot zero zero, or 12 hours and 30 minutes, or 13 hours, whatever the physician, however many hours the physician wants you, or the NP wants you to have this patient connected to the cycler. You don't have to put in a dwell time because the machine automatically calculates that. So then the next question is fill volume. And the answer to that is how much do you want to go into the patient at one time? Typically, it's going to be somewhere between two and three liters. It will never be over three liters. The human peritoneal cavity will not hold more than a three liter volume. Okay. Then you hit the down button and it'll say last fill volume. Some patients may be dry during the day, meaning that they end in a drain. So it could be a last fill volume of zero. That's not very common. Most of the time, there's a fill volume in the patient because when you're talking about peritoneal dialysis, the dialysis occurs when there's dialysis fluid against the peritoneal membrane. So they typically want that. So your last fill volume, though, may be a different amount. Maybe the patient's going for physical therapy. So instead of filling with three liters, during the day they want a lesser amount, it might be two liters. So but the physician will write that in their prescription, last fill amount or last fill volume. But that's what you'll put there. And then dextrose. As I said in the beginning, there are three types of dextrose. 
the 1.5%, which is color-coded yellow, 2.5%, which is color-coded green, 4.25%, which is color-coded red. So the 1.5% is the smallest amount of dextrose. If you think about it in trying to manage a patient's fluid, if you sprinkle one teaspoon across a bowl of strawberries, you're not going to get a lot of liquid. There's not going to be a lot of syrup. But if you take four teaspoons and sprinkle that over of sugar and sprinkle that over a bowl of strawberries, you come back in a little bit, you've got a lot more syrup. You're pulling more fluid out of those strawberries. It's the same kind of principle. The dextrose is what pulls the fluid off of the patient, and then it drains into the patient's drain bag. And the machine will count how much the difference is, and that's called your ultrafiltration. So is the dextrose same, or is it different? That will be in your physician's prescription, and if it's the same, then it doesn't matter what bag you place on the blue clamp. But if it's different, then the pharmacy should send you up a different dextrose, and that is the one that you will have connected to the blue clamp. If the physician writes, last bag fill, a different type of solution, a different dextrose from your therapy volume. Hit the down button again, and here you have, you can change this to pounds or kilograms. Most nephrologists like the kilograms. Hit the down button again, and you can enter your patient's weight. Some machines, they have a um, USB port that they will record the data on that. And then there's software that Baxter uses that the patient can actually take that out of the machine to their dialysis unit, and they'll be able to download their records, alarms, and everything through that machine. This machine doesn't have that, but you still have the feature where you can have the patient's weight. And then you scroll, we use the up button to scroll back up. Kind of. to go. We'll stop. Cycle one, dwell time, and we're in dwell one of one in our demonstration. The other question that may pop up is what if the patient has a cloudy effluent? Anytime the patient has a cloudy effluent, the first thing you have to think is peritonitis. And that is a medical emergency. That is a stop what you're doing. That needs to be dealt with instantly or as faster than that if you can. So the fluid, when it comes out of the drain bag, you want to make sure that it's clear. But if you have to get a sample on the drain line, this part is your drain sample. You have an effluent sample bag. You can pull this out. This is clean. You might want to put your gloves on just because it's kind of like emptying a urinal. Think of it like that. This is clamped, so you can pull this off, pull that off, twist it together, and if you open this clamp, it uses gravity. This holds 150 cc's, so if the nephrologist writes for you to collect an effluent sample, you can connect it, collect it in this bag. Oh, but wait, what if the patient's not on the cycler? 
we've thought of that. What you can do is this part on your effluent sample bag also connects onto the transfer set. So you could get the effluent directly from the transfer set before you connect to the cycler. But if you forget, or if during the therapy, you need to get a sample of the effluent coming out of the patient, this is a super easy way to do it. You just make that connection, unclamp your line, unclamp this line, and it will only fill to 150 cc's. You can come back in a little bit and get this bag will be full. And then you just clamp, clamp, disconnect, and you can use a mini cap to cover the end of your connection. You have a port that if you need to send a cell count, it goes in a purple top tube, just like you're getting it out of an IV bag. You can connect, use your um, sample, put your tube in, and send it to the lab. If you're sending it for a culture, you could do the same thing. Um, one thing I would recommend is that you send the whole bag, and you can protect the end with a mini cap. A mini cap will fit on the end. Make sure it's clamped, and put that in your lab, in that biohazard bag, and just send the whole thing to the lab, and they'll know what to do with it. So that's how to collect a sample. Another question that might pop up while we're talking about it is the drain bag. The drain bag itself, this will hold over 20 liters of fluid. And it's nearly indestructible. I've had these bags be so full and had a patient weighing over 300 pounds sitting in a chair and accidentally rolled over it while it was full and didn't rip it. So the plastic is very heavy duty, is made to withstand just about anything. Um, but the biggest thing is to make sure that your outlet port is clamped. I promise you'll only forget that one time. So hopefully this video has answered some of your questions about setting up the cycler, walking through, um, answering some of the problems. At the end, it'll say end of therapy, and it may have a beep at the end, but it'll only beep one time. A couple things that I do want to go back and say, when you are setting up your cycler, say for example, you know you're going to be busy between 5 and 6 p.m., what you can do is you can set the cycler up in advance. Say, for example, you want to set the cycler up about 2 o'clock where you've kind of got some downtime, but you know between 5 and 6 p.m. or 8 p.m., whatever time, you're going to be super busy. You can set it up in advance, and it will stay ready to go until you press the go button. So there's nothing wrong with that. At the same time, as if it hits end of therapy and you're connected to the patient, you don't have to be there at that exact moment. The patient can stay connected to the machine and it can say end of therapy for several hours until you can get to the patient to finish up and end your therapy. So when it says end of therapy, you want to tell the machine will walk you through. And so you're going to hit go and it's going to tell you exactly what to do. Close all clamps. So you're going to go through your machine, you're going to close your heater clamp, close your last fill, close your fill line, and one thing to point out is we only did just a little brief demonstration, so the therapy volume that you have these bags will be completely empty. If, for example, say the uh, doctor wrote a 12 liter, but you connected 15, there's going to be some fluid left in the bags. So don't let that throw you. Okay? Then you're going to close 
your clamp to the patient and close your twist clamp. Again, you're getting ready to do a sterile procedure. It's a sterile thing to disconnect and you're exposing your sterile parts. With uh, dialysis, with peritoneal dialysis, you have three sterile parts. Whatever connects to the patient end of the, the navy blue part of the patient line is sterile. Of the tank off of the transfer set, that's sterile. The patient connector is sterile. And the inside of your mini cap is sterile. So when you're getting ready to do your sterile parts, you want to make sure you put or expose your sterile parts. You want to make sure you put your sterile procedure in progress on the door. You're going to do your hand hygiene. And the patient's going to wear a mask. You're going to wear a mask. But you don't need to don sterile gloves. Because keep in mind, you're going to be touching a clean part. It's the tips that are sterile. Okay, so you can put your clean gloves on, and just for demonstration's sake, we'll just kind of pretend. Okay, um, I'll get the mini cap. And so we've closed all the clamps. Clamps closed, twist clamp is closed clamps to all of your bags are closed and so we're ready to go forward to the next step we're going to go it's going to tell you please wait while the machine kind of shuts itself down and it's going to tell you to disconnect yourself Close all clamps. Before you do that, there are two pieces of information that you want to make sure that you get from the machine. You're going to scroll down your initial drain volume. So whatever this number is, your initial drain volume, you're going to have your Epic opened up to the Cycler's flow sheet in Epic. And you're going to document the initial drain. So the things that we have highlighted in green are your end of therapy documentation. So your initial drain, you're going to put that in when you take the patient off. So that will probably be time-wise about 5, 6, even as late as 8 a.m. Initial drain volume. Down button, total UF. So whatever the ultra, whatever that number is, it gets documented under ultra filtration ML. It should always be a positive number. If it's a negative number, the machine can tell you exchange by exchange by exchange how much fluid got reabsorbed back into the patient. A one-time negative number probably isn't going to be too alarming depending on other things with the patient, but that's definitely something that you want to point out to the nephrologist if there's a negative number. Two other things to keep in mind that might produce a negative number is if the patient has um, constipation. So knowing when the patient's last bowel movement was would be an important piece of information. If you have a patient who is constipated, that could block the um, holes in the patient's tank off catheter inside their peritoneal membrane and not allow the patient to drain out. And that could produce a negative number. Okay? So just one thing to think about. Um, and then. The next thing you want to document is flow, and what it's asking is, did you have any problems? So for example, did you have to answer any alarms, or if there were no problems? Hopefully there are no problems, but under this list, 
you'll have a list of potential issues and so you just pick the ones that apply. Okay. When you're putting the patient on the machine and you're setting it up, what you document is the dial dianeal solution is the dextrose. On this pick list, you'll have all different, all three different dextroses in the several different sizes. It could be a two liter, two and a half liter, five liter, or six liter. Okay. If you have to add solute, add something to the dianeal or the di dialysate, then what you're going to do is um, the pharmacy will add that, and it could be heparin or it could be an antibiotic. Then the last thing you want to document when you're taking the patient off the machine is was the effluent appearance, what color was it? It should be clear. Okay. So that's your epic documentation. And then you hit go. And once you've disconnected, you can turn me off. So then we've got our hand hygiene done. We've got our mask on. We've got our gloves on. The patient has a mask. What you're going to do is open up your mini cat. Make sure your twist clamp is closed, your patient's line is clamped, holding it in your fist, you're going to twist and holding it by the light blue part, you're going to twist the patient connector off, drop it, get your mini cap and twist it until you have a thin blue line. So you're going to make sure it's on there good and tight. And then you're done. Okay, before you turn me off, you can lift the door, pull your cassette out, close the door, and then turn the machine off. Now this generates a potential question. You get busy. Oh my goodness, I forgot to write the UF down. I forgot to get the initial drain. No worries. Turn the machine back on. It'll beep. It'll say, please wait. You hit the down button. Hit the down button. Down button again. And right there it is. So you just keep hitting the down button until you see the thing of it is the machine will keep in memory what the last therapy volume or what the last initial drain and last UF was until you hit go to start a new therapy. So as long as you don't hit go to start a new therapy, you can still retrieve your data. Okay. but it only holds in memory the previous treatment until you start a new treatment. So once you hit go to start, you're starting a new treatment, all that data is lost. Okay, so while, we, while I have you here, we're going to go up, and now you have some opportunities to make some adjustments. So say for example, we're going to hit the enter button. So yes, I want to enter the making adjustments menu. Enter. You can adjust the brightness of the screen. If you hit enter, it'll flash. You can make it brighter. You can make it softer, depending on what the patient wants or what you need. And then hit enter to make it stick. You can hit the down button again and it'll adjust the loudness of the alarm. Say for example, the patient is right next to the nurse's station, so it doesn't need to be all that loud. You can hit the down button and it'll lower the tone. But what if your patient is like 10 rooms down away from the nurse's station and you want to make sure that you hear it out in the hall? 
you can hit the up button and make it as loud as the sirens that go off on Wednesday at noon. Okay. Hit the enter button. That's what I want. Hit the down button again. Auto dim no. If you want to make the auto dim work, you hit the enter button. You can hit up. It'll say yes. I'm going to go back to no. But if it says yes, after a period of time, the screen will disappear, and the only way you'll know the machine is working is there will be a silent little green dot that just keeps going across the screen. If the machine alarms, it will tell you exactly what is wrong. And then there should be somewhere in the patient's paraphernalia a Baxter troubleshooting book you go straight to that menu and it'll walk you through how to resolve that alarm. If for whatever reason you can't find that book, you call the 1-800-BAXTER number that's located on the machine. It will ask you for the serial number of your cycler, which is in the bold black letters. Getting a screenshot of that. So you'll need to have that piece of information. And whoever is on the other end of the Baxter line will walk you through how to resolve whatever that alarm, alarm might be. Okay. Hit the down button again. You can set the clock. If we're in um, April and November, if we need to do the daylight savings time thing. And then you can set the date if you need to. It does that automatically. The initial drain alarm. Earlier in um, our presentation, I mentioned about the initial drain that some patients are dry. If you have a patient who has a dry day, you're not going to be you want to turn your initial drain alarm off. So you would hit enter and hit the down button and then hit enter again and then that turns the alarm off. What that means is the patient will still automatically go into an initial drain but if the alarm is off what you're telling the machine is don't expect anything out because there won't be anything to come out and it'll only drain for a few minutes initially and then it'll flip right into fill. On the other side, if you have a patient that has a full abdomen, he has a full peritoneal cavity, then if you have a two and a half liter fill volume was the last thing that went into the patient, you're going to want to know if that patient doesn't get most of that volume out. So at what threshold, if it's a two liter, the machine automatically defaults. You don't have to set it to 1800. So it's going to default to that. You can program it. If you have a patient that has a three liter fill volume, you're going to expect more than 1800 out of that patient initially. I hope that makes sense. So. You have your initial drain alarm. You can change the comfort control. And what this is, is it's 36 degrees Celsius. So the machine, the temperature of the fluid going into the patient, you can make it 37 to 35. So that's your range. So say, for example, the patient is saying, I feel too warm when I'm on the cycler. You can enter the menu. It flashes so you can make a change. You can lower it to 35 degrees. Okay. Or you can make it a little warmer, up to 37. So that's your range, 35 to 37. If you have a last manual drain, again, so say you want to put the patient on the machine and you need to to drain the patient manually before you put the patient, before they start the therapy, you can program it to do that. This machine does a lot of things. 
if you have a ultra filtrate target the UF target what that does is if you get less than what you expect out is your total UF the machine will alarm and tell you sometimes it's just as simple as making the patient roll over to their left side that's going to maybe change the position of the catheter inside their body so they'll be able to drain more out or you may have the patient turn to their right side it could be that you might need to set the patient up a little bit if the patient is laying flat when you move the patient to a semi fowler's position gravity is going to help you and be able to drain more out um, and then alarm no go back to the beginning and now you're at press go to start so that you're making adjustments